it feels like it's been a really busy few weeks for Manchester United. The pre-season, the positives from pre-season, all the players leaving with their contracts expiring. We've made a couple of signings, still more to do. And the to-do list for Eric Ten Hag, given that we've got Brighton in less than two weeks, feels absolutely huge. And there is still so much more that he needs to do. What I'm going to do in this video is run through that full to-do list that includes Ronaldo, that includes De Jong, that includes new signings, Martinez and Eriksen, that includes player sales, that includes player loans. There really is still so much more that needs to be done for this to be considered a very successful summer for Manchester United. And I'm going to run through all of it. So make sure you do subscribe to United People's TV. If you do enjoy the video by the end of it, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well. I'd love to have you involved in the community. But let's run through it, eh? because I'll be honest, it was a fantastic pre-season tour. It was a, a pre-season tour that was full of positives, full of the fundamentals, full of a new look United working under Eric Ten Hag. And now today, Eric's back. Everyone's back at Carrington. After flying back from Perth on Sunday, they got Monday off, Tuesday kicks off. And of course... We've managed to avoid it taking over too much of the preseason, which, which pleasantly surprised me. But now the full focus is going to be on Cristiano Ronaldo, Jorge Mendes, who's sitting alongside him, and what goes on with Ronaldo's future. It's top of the to-do list. If we are to sign a new attacker this summer, any plans around that are parked until we know what's going on with Cristiano Ronaldo, because depending on what happens there, changes what happens in that conversation. Now, with this Ronaldo situation, it really has all kicked off today. Fergie, he's at Carrington. Brian Robson's at Carrington. I, I, I literally joked about it on Twitter, but you may as well get Roy Keane involved. You may as well get the whole gang back there. But Fergie being there, I don't think he should be getting involved in this. I don't think Fergie's going to be there to slap Ronaldo upside the head. To say, what the hell are you doing, you idiot? You're not bigger than the club. Fergie won't do that. Fergie's going to go there and speak to him and probably try and convince him to stay. I don't want Man United to be convincing anybody to stay. And yeah, you know, we were talking. We've been talking a lot of this summer about you know having players that want to play for the club. And lots of you said, Sam, why do you want to go after De Jong when he doesn't want to play for the club? And I've told you that they're two different things. Him wanting to stay at Barcelona does not mean that he doesn't want to play for Manchester United. I think they are separate things. But Fergie being there, I don't know. It's a bit of a weird flex. I think so anyway. Eric Ten Hag should be able to negotiate this in, on his own. He should be able to speak to this player, Ronaldo. Do you want to stay? Yes. Cool. You're in my team. Do you not want to stay? Cool. We'll sell you. Move on. See you later. Got some training to do. I'm a bit busy. Because he is busy. There's so much to do. And that's why I don't want to get distracted and pulled apart. United's plans now in the next couple of weeks just to get pulled apart because Ronaldo wants to do what Ronaldo wants to do. But again, we were told, of course, it was all to do with family reasons. But he's back on the first day of training. Again. The timeline of the whole thing does not match up. Yeah, and the fact that Fergie's there, don't know why Fergie needs to be there. I, I, I would rather at this point in time that Fergie wasn't really involved in anything to do with Ronaldo. I think this is something that the club should be able to resort on their own. If they can't, just bring Roy Keane in. Let him slap Ronaldo upside the head. Maybe him and Ronaldo can do, him and Fergie can do something from the top turnbuckle. But this Ronaldo situation will, of course, dominate Ten Hag's to-do list. And this is the thing that annoys me because there is so much on that to-do list. We've got the game against Brighton in less than two weeks, right? And of course, there's two new signings that have turned up today. I like that. It's been a really awkward uh, <laughs> car journey, just sitting there, just like, I don't know. Yeah. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, yeah, yeah well, I'm, I'm Christian. Hi, mate. I'm Miss Andre. If you can speak English. I don't know whether he can speak English or not, but they're both at Carrington. We've got Mike Provide from The Telegraph uh, out in Holland confirming that Manchester United are, are aiming to announce and make uh, Lissandra Martinez official either today or tomorrow. So maybe I'll be back here later on this evening with another live stream. But Martinez and Ericsson. Eric Ten Hag, he's had a brilliant pre-season tour. He's got all the play all set players, lots and lots of players settled in now. He has to get these two players settled in. Ericsson will be training hopefully with the first team today. Martinez will train as soon as um, it's all been made official and it's announced. But that's a huge thing that he's got to focus on. Instead of focusing on what Ronaldo wants to do obviously the, fa the fact that Jorge Mendes is there alongside him it just goes to show you this isn't Ronaldo returning to training this is Ronaldo returning to have a conversation with the club a conversation that Fergie may well be involved in now you can let me know what you think about that Fergie idea I don't really think we need him involved in that I'll be completely honest it should be down to Richard Arnold John Murto and Eric Ten Hag 
the new administration should be able to deal with anything that revolves around this Ronaldo situation. No doubt it will develop and we'll find out more about it. But other than that, the, the, the to-do list is still almost exhaustive. We've got rid of so many players this summer because they've left on a free, uh, because their contracts have expired. Paul Pogba, Edison Cavani, Juan Mata, Jesse Lingard, Nemanja Matic. Great news for all of that. Dean Henderson, he's gone to Nottingham Forest on loan. But there's still so much that needs to be done. A good deal that's been announced today, which I'm very happy about, is Alvaro Fernandez going to Preston North End on loan for the season. Because we've signed Tyrell Malasia, there wasn't really going to be an opportunity for Alvaro to come through and play regular football. But he's too good to play for the under-23s. Good. We've got a loan spell for him. That's it sorted there. But when you look at this list of players, you realise how much still needs to be done. We can start here, of course, with Eric Bai. Eric Bai, he's been linked with a move to uh, Roma. And I've spoken about that in the live stream this morning. And I think it will be a good, a good move for all parties. He'll go back. He'll work with the manager in Jose Mourinho, who brought into Manchester United in the first place. If we can get between 8 and 10 million, actually, it's around about 10 million for um, Andreas Pereira. We should be able to get 10 to 15 million for Eric Bailly. A good bit of money, not making profit on a player, but I think we signed for 30 odd million. It hasn't quite worked out to get 10 to 15 is a decent recoup. And selling a player at a time when he has a resale value, not something we've been very good at. But Eric Bailly, something's got to be resolved around his future. What about Phil Jones? Something has to be done with Phil Jones. He's, uh, you can go back here. This is back in what, 18th of July. Uh, Manchester United are willing to listen to offers for Eric Bailly, Axel Tuanzebe and Phil Jones. And that absolutely should be the case because Manchester United have got seven first to a centre-back. Well, seven first-team centre-backs on our books. Phil Jones, we need to find a club for him. Is this to do with the wages? I don't know. But that's another name on the to-do list. Of course, you could say, well, hold up here, Sam. Kind of isn't. Eric Ten Hag's to-do list is a bit like John Murto's to-do list, Andy O'Boyle's to-do list. I suppose it's Manchester United's to-do list as a whole, but if Ten Hag has a to-do list of things that all these things he wants sorted before the season starts, then both of these will be on that list. Phil Jones, I think, leaving, and Eric Bailly leaving as well. But there's so many other defenders that could also be moved on. Alex Tellez, I don't think, will have a place in this Manchester United squad this season. We should be looking at lo loaning him with a move with a. a I don't know, an obligation to buy. Maybe that's going to be the same way uh, with Eric Bailly because of his wages. Don't know there. Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Uh, if we can find a club that would sign him, I think it would be in his interest, in Manchester United's interest, for him to be moved on. We're hearing about Brandon Williams. Brandon Williams going to Brighton, I think, to replace Mark Cucurella, who's going to be going to City. So that's three defenders. Axel Tuenzebe. Four defenders. Alvaro Fernandez. He's just gone out on loan. Not sure what's going on with Telemengi. Is he going to have another loan spell? Four defenders there, plus Eric Bai, plus Phil Jones. That's six defenders who could realistically not be playing for Manchester United next season, who realistically need either loan spells or sold on a permanent deal. Ahmad Diallo, I think the way he played in preseason, it goes to show physically I don't think he's completely ready for it. What's going on with him? Potential loan spell. James Garner, I think he should be staying at the club. Eh, Donny van der Beek will probably stay as well, but there's more needed in that midfield. And of course, up front, eh, what have we got down here? We'll get a loan spell for Schola. You need to sort out the Cristiano Ronaldo situation. That's about it. But talking about midfield, I mean, that's what I mean. There is so much more to do. All the conversation, nearly nine minutes here, and I haven't mentioned Frankie, well, maybe I mentioned Frankie de Jong, but Frankie de Jong, it, it, the Frankie de Jong situation has to be resolved. The number one priority. The two biggest things, I think, this summer for Manchester United, number one will be Frankie de Jong. And number two will unfortunately be what's going on with Cristiano Ronaldo. Both of those are open situations. Both of those, we don't know what the conclusion of either of them will be. We hope that Frankie de Jong will join Manchester United and then we'll find a, a resolution to the wage situation. But that has to be resolved. And then, of course, we need to get a new attacker. But we can't really sort out a new attacker until we know what's going on with Cristiano Ronaldo. And when you, when you do a video like this and, and you say it all out loud, you're like, Jesus, Eric Ten Hag still has so much more work to do for this to be considered a successful summer. Lissandro Martinez, excellent. Tara Malasia, that's exciting. Christian Mar Eriksen, smart free transfer. Players leaving, good work done. But it goes to show the scale of this rebuild. This Ronaldo situation, it's an unnecessary distraction. It's not what we needed, not what we wanted, and not what we planned to do. 
But right now, I don't want to see United begging, putting Fergie out, and just saying, Ronaldo, please stay. If he wants to leave, sack him off. Done. I don't want anybody to be begging any player to play for Manchester United. You might say that we're begging De Jong. I don't think we're begging De Jong. We just agreed to deal with him. At, uh, de agreed to deal with Barcelona. Uh, and he needs to find out a way to get those wages sorted. And then hopefully he can join. I think those situations are separate. In my opinion, you can probably disagree with me. Some of you, no doubt, will. Do you think Fergie should be there and involved in his conversations? Brian Robson? I don't know what Brian Robson's doing there. Maybe he was just going for something else. Whew. But you can see why I need to do this video. This to-do list is exhaustive still and the season's kicking off in less than two weeks there is so much more to do player sales player loans player purchases new signings being embedded into the team cristiano ronaldo frankie de jong I, the list is not endless but there's a lot to do for this to be considered a successful summer you can let me know what you think in the comments below about what your your gut feelings are about what's going to happen with ronaldo and de jong and all the player sales and all the player loans jeez i don't know Ooh, eric ten Hag, man John Murto, Richard Arnold, you got your work cut out for the next couple of weeks. You let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe if you're new.